Welcome. In this section, we are going to talk about MySQL replication. We are going to look at MySQL's binary logs first, as MySQL's replication is based on those. We are going to set up a slave replica. Also, we will discuss how to migrate to GTID replication. First, let's start with the binary log. In this video, we will learn about MySQL's binary log, the various binary log formats, and we will learn about the MySQL bin log utility and how can we use it to check the contents of the binary log. The binary log has every single write that happened on the database. Over time this grows huge, so rotating them is essential. When the application writes to the database, the database server writes its binary log with the changes in it. Only writes are in the binary log, reads are not kept track of. At the statement level, selects are generally not in the binary log. There can be exceptions though. Also at the statement level, normally an insert, an update or delete statement will generate a binary log entry as well. The binary log is written on commit, of course only if the storage engine supports transactions, otherwise it's written at the end of the statement. Binary log format can be statement and row. The format is settable on a per session basis. This means that a single server can have both statement and row based binary log entries even within the same binary log file. In the statement format, the SQL statement itself is logged and the same SQL is executed on the slave. Statement format is present from 3.23. This is the original MySQL binary log format. This is a sample statement based binary log event from the output of MySQL bin log. We can see some metadata at the beginning, like the timestamp of the event, what's the server ID, and then the actual SQL statement is the line before the last one, the insert. Row format binary logs are available since MySQL 5.1. In case of row format, instead of the SQL, the actual physical records are written to the binary log. The binary log containing the SQL has issues with non-deterministic statements. In the previous example, we inserted now, which is non-deterministic. Non-deterministic means that if I run the same SQL twice at different times, I won't get the same result. If time is a component in this, this was certainly not all true. So now makes this statement not deterministic. Built-in non-deterministic functions like now are handled by the server. Remember the example of the binary log entry, it had the timestamp set at the level of the binary log entry, so the server knows what timestamp should it insert if now is called. For custom stored functions and procedures, the developer has to tell the server if the given function or procedure is deterministic or not. So in case of row-based logging, we transfer the resulting records instead. Each entry will have a before row image, an after row image, or both. Let's look at, at the update event first. In case of an update event, the system will store what record changed to what record. The red record is called the before image, the green record is called the after image. A row based log event for an update describes that the red record is changed to the green record. How does this look like in MySQL bin log output? Here is the same example from the output of MySQL bin log output, where the logical representation of the before and the after image is highlighted. Remember that the red was the before image and the green was the after image. The actual binary representation of this is the bin log and the not human readable data there. An insert event will only have an after image because it's a new record. There is nothing to change it from. Similarly, in the output of the MySQL bin log, we will only have an after image highlighted with green. A delete event only has a before image because it has no record to change to. The record will be just gone from the database. Same with MySQL bin log. The before image is highlighted with red. The showmaster logs comment displays what binary logs does the server have. Binary logs are used for replication and point in time recovery. Point in time recovery will be discussed later in this course with the backups. Without deletion, binary logs are ever growing, so purging them is essential. 
There are a few built-in tools and many external tools to help with this. The purge method that is used in most deployments is expired logs days. In this case, the server automatically purges binary logs that are older than a certain date, more than n days old. With the purge master log SQL statement, the binary logs can be purged up to a certain point in time or up to a certain file. Let's do lab4a together, where we will examine binary logs. Let's continue with lab4a, where we will check the binary logs. First, let's check if the virtual machine is running. It's not. So let's start up the lab environment. This will take more time for you than what it takes for me. And it's done. Let's log into the database. We are in. Let's start the MySQL client. Check the current master file name and position with the show master status command. Note this position because we are going to use it. So my terminal scrollback is set to infinite, so I will be able to scroll back to this to check it out. Let's create a table in the sbtest uh, database. Table is created. Let's insert the record. Here we are. We have an auto increment primary key, so now we'll insert the next primary key, and we are inserting the timestamp of now. Let's check what bin log format was this in. This was in row format. So let's set the bin log format to statement within the session. It's worth mentioning that this does not change the global bin log format. With this select. So the session is in statement format, but the global, which is just a default for new session, is in row format. Let's insert another record, but now this will be logged in statement format. Okay, it's done. Let's check the records. Okay, they are there. So let's exit from the MySQL client. Let's check the binary log. What was logged in row mode and what was logged in statement mode. The file name and the position we are going to be using will be from the beginning of the lab. So the file name was this, if I scroll back, this was the file name, and the position is 4868. It has a lot of output. Can you scroll back to examine it, or it can be piped to less. So let's see, what do we have here? So this binary log is in use, it's okay. So at this position, we have some metadata, like the timestamp, 
It is an anonymous transaction from the GTID standpoint. We are going to talk about it later. But here we have our create table statement in statement format. But at this time we didn't set the set the session to log in statement format. The reason for that is that data definition language like create table, alter table and stuff like that is always logged in statement format. So even if you are using row based logs, you will have some things that are logged in statement format like create table and alter table statements. Let's see what else do we have. Okay, looks like at this position we have a new transaction. And this is a row based binary log event. I can tell that it's an insert by looking at this and seeing that only has an after image. And the transaction is committed because of auto commit. So this was our first insert. And indeed it was logged in row format. Now we have another transaction. Let's see what what's that. We have some metadata. It sets the insert ID to 2, which is the auto increment value. And in this case we are logging the SQL, the insert statement itself. The insert ID and the timestamp needs to be set because this can yield different results on the slave. Because we are not specifying the ID, so it needs to be the same as the master. And we are not specifying the timestamp, we are specifying now. So we want the slave to have the same timestamp of the master. This is an example of what I talked about in the slide section that the built in things have have appropriate handling of possible non-deterministic values. Then it's committed and it's the end of the binary log file. Not only it's the end of the binary log file, it's the end of the lab as well. So let's exit from the SSH session and destroy the environment.